and then the Cupid will deterministically say yes. So there are situations where you get deterministic answers. And the, okay, and obviously the whole space of possibilities is much richer. You're in a quantum state. Yeah. You're in a quantum state. If you ask a classical question, then you reduce that richness to a simplicity. If, on the other hand, you find a way to pose the quantum question and get a quantum answer, then it then it can give you a deterministic answer. Yeah, but it still doesn't respond to His Holiness's question. His Holiness's question is that when you use the machine, say for example, like you have to switch on the motor based on the quantum machine, then the, unless you get a determinate response that will, you know, when you want to switch on the engine, it has to switch it on. Right. You, right. You have, you have a very different interior to the machine, you could say. The, the motor of the, of the engine, in the case of the quantum computer, is quite different. The, the states of the interior are ambiguous in the way that is described here. They don't have uh, a cycle where you, in the normal computer, you'd start with one deterministic state and then you go to the next deterministic state and to the next deterministic state. In this case, there's an evolution, but in this quantum richness, with this quantum ambiguity. And picking up on the theme of measurement that you said last time, when you remember the double slit, when you measured, it ruined everything. If you do the same here, it ruins the computation. The machine will crash if you look inside. Right? So you have to allow the ambiguity. <laughs> the primary substance. <laughs> substance. The primary <laughs> substance. Right. <laughs> レッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレッツレ
you can ha take different amounts of zeros and one, and that's the richness. And the big trick is if you do a calculation with your computer, which question in, uh, to answer in the end, such that you don't run into the randomness problem. That's a serious research research program, but people have found ways to 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 answer that. So your your point is your point is well taken. No. You are absolutely right. You are completely correct. His Holiness is wondering because um, again, comparing to um, kind of Buddhist epistemological distinction between how thoughts and conceptual thoughts work by means of exclusion and selection, and they select properties one at a time and, and engage with the object, whereas uh, experience or perceptual experience is thought to be much more encompassing, right. can contain a lot more information. So he's wondering whether that is a parallel. All information you want to um, So the quantum approach would be ability to capture all the information. Is that the idea? It's not. Mm. Whereas the, the, the non quantum would be kind of a selective approach. Exclude well, by selecting one, you exclude yeah. the other. Yeah, this there is a quantum holism yeah. which is characteristic, I, I think you're going to talk about, right? I think we should mention that right away here. Yeah. That's okay. the right thing. Uh, I think that connects to exactly this question now. Uh, there is a beautiful novel, a beautiful story by the Argentin Argentinian writer Jorge Luis Borges. Uh, Borges. Borges wrote a novel which is called The Infinite Library, or, or in some languages it's called The Library of Babel, ba Babylon. It's a library which contains all books which have ever been written and all books which will ever be written. <laughs> okay? How is that possible? Now it's easily possible because uh, you print books with all possible combinations of letters. So isn't that had, had, in that case it's all been done since the you know ever since the letter was invented all possible combinations have been used. No, I mean your your book the 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 world in a single atom is a new combination of letters, which has not been used before. I use all all letters you know all letters which I need to write down. You, each book each book is this. Specific so then how, how can you have a library that has all the books that will be future. written in the future? Well, because not, not yet materialized. Because you just start with all possibilities. You, you, the first letter is you start with A. The second one oh. A, second one A. Next book ah. is A, A, B. Next one is A, A, C. And so on. All combinations. Right? Now, Borges himself realizes that such a library is not very useful. <laughs> because how do you find the right book? How do you find, for example, the world in a, in, a, in a single atom by His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Because this library contains the world, the universe in a single atom. It also contains the universe in a single atom with one, <laughs> with all possible single misprints, yes. with all possible two misprints, three, four, and so on. So it's not a very useful library. <laughs> You know, there's actually mathematicians who can prove that it's you will ex you would expect that anyway that if you want to have a certain book it's is much more work to find it in that library than to write it yourself yeah. <laughs> 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 
Now this is just the story of Borges, yeah. beautiful oh. novel. Now the big news is that in quantum mechanics we can we can actually write we have can have one book which contains all possible books. It's not a library, it is one book which contains all possible books. Indo you know mental medicine say Tim in the Christ give it to us. Uh, Disha, yes. <laughs> you know, and, uh, I, I now want to explain briefly how this book works. Uh, in this book, the information is written down in, you guess it, qubits, in quantum bits. It's not written in bits, in qubits. And furthermore, these qubits are all entangled with each other. Entanglement means, you, we, uh, in your book, your Holiness talk about entanglement between two particles. Now in this book I have 100,000 or 200,000 or whatever letters it takes to write a book of qubits all entangled with each other. Which simply means that just like in the, in the, in the, in the two particle case it meant that, that uh, when I look at one, I do a measurement I influence the other one. Now, this is a picture which tries to indicate the entanglement of many qubits. Each blue point is supposedly to be a qubit and you have uh, many connections here. Now, if I measure one qubit, then it changes the whole state. It does not only change the one I look at, it changes all the other ones. Then I measure another one, not the one first, another cupid, and that changes the rest. And I keep going. And if I keep going the right way, in the end, I have the book I want. So, if you type the, the first sentence of His Holiness's book, one letter at a time, gradually you'll collapse the whole book. Right. Out, you'll, you'll pull that whole book out of the library. So this is one book which contains all possible books because of quantum superposition and because of entanglement. This is meant, and this is not just, <laughs> this is not just, I mean, this is not just fantasy, this is reality, you know. I mean, we do experiments not with 100,000 but with a few qubits. But this is really a technology which is now being developed. Is it because the superposition allows you to... Wolf has a comment. Go ahead, finish. Is it because the superposition allows you a much greater capacity for storage? That's right. And then the entanglement provides you that if you get the first thing right, because they are all entangled, you will get the others... You collapse the others. Yeah. Is, very Is that the idea? These are the two essential points. But then how can you Absolutely have, correct. But how much do you have to get to, you know, get the rest of the book out? Well, the point actually is, is as always, a little bit more complicated. Uh, the point is that there are two things. Uh, the way Arthur presented it was a way to visualize it nicely. But what really happens when I measure one qubit, I take it out of the entangled state. It's the rest which I drive somewhere. First point. Second point, you, you were quite right in saying if I do have this entangled state and I've, if I get the right measurement, then I can proceed. The right result. Now, in quantum mechanics, we have this uh, <laughs> silly randomness, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, we, so we don't know actually whether we get the right result or the wrong one. And in half of the cases we get the wrong one. Now the real trick now is, and that's a great discovery, not made by us, it's a great discovery, that if you, if you change the future measurement, depending on the result you get earlier, you can correct for that randomness. Okay? Mm -hmm. 